you, Father, for this opportunity to worship you. And Lord, uh, I know we take it for granted, but Lord, we don't want to. And Father, I just want us to enjoy being together and being able to corporately worship and, and raise your name the way we cannot do. <clears throat> Uh, Lord, even in our homes when we worship with our family, Lord, we just give this time to you. We thank you for it. We realize that the ability, uh, Father, the opportunity to even give back praise to you comes from you. Father, it is, it, you are all, you are everything to us. And we just pray, Lord, that you feel that in our expression of worship today. Lord, we thank you and we praise you. In the name of Jesus, we pray it. Amen. And do not sit down. We're gonna we are going to sing count your blessings, and we're gonna sing that together right now. We're gonna do the verses with the chorus in between. One chorus, two chorus, three chorus, four chorus. Is that okay with you, brother T. Roy? Here we go. Count your blessings. So just, just come back tonight. I want to share that with you. Uh, and also, we may 
we may ask, well, we're going to ask for sure, uh, uh, if you want to share a blessing that is yours, I think that's so important to do, because your blessing may encourage someone else to realize a blessing that they have. So we'll, we'll continue counting those uh, to not at our business meeting. Also, I'm going to ask Sister Linda Loomis, if she will, to come forward. And uh, you want to stand at the pulpit, or would you rather have a microphone, Linda? Maybe a microphone. Excellent. I've got one right here for you. I understand. So red mic it is, and you come and speak to us about it. Correct? Yes, it is on. Yes, ma'am. Good morning. Um, I think you, uh, most of you know we usually have a holiday lunch, and it's between Thanksgiving and Christmas. And this year it's going to be on the 6th. So we're hoping everyone here can come. And next week we'll have a sign-up of things that we think would be appropriate. And if you, if it's that list is full, then bring anything that is special for you for Thanksgiving. However, just take a minute and look around at the people that are here and who you used to see sitting in front of you or next to you that those people aren't here right now. So we thought for our holiday lunch it would be nice if we could recognize people that can't come for whatever reason, our church members, and we will list them here, the church members, and we will fix a lunch for them. It's, since it's in between uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas, it would be it won't be on the holiday itself, so it's they won't have family in or anything special. But it's our special day here at Carlisle. So if you put someone's name up here or a family name, we will certainly fix food for them. And then I request that whoever puts the name here put their name next to it, and they can deliver that food. So yeah. that way, everyone that we recognize will get, you know, a friendly face that they used to sit next to or that they know, and it won't just be a small group taking food all over at one time. So, you know, we'll have the food ready. We'll have, you know, a bag so that the, we can take it. Most everyone has a microwave, so they can certainly heat the food at home. And so if you have someone that you'd like to recognize and in include in our church activity, please put their name here and then sign so that you can deliver their food. So thank you very much. Amen. Amen? Amen. What a great idea, Linda. Thank you so much. I know it's a, it's a term that I didn't, uh, uh, a phrase that I didn't coin, but I think we could call that Meals on Wheels. So anyway, <laughs> that would be wonderful. And if you want to be a part of that, the stand is back there in the foyer. So I'm sorry we didn't get that out of the way. Uh, beforehand, and I actually have to do something else so my family will hear because I could not remember. Phyllis, did you tell me, I think it was last week, no, it was the week before that, we were talking about a Thanksgiving song that you sang growing up, and I said we would do it. Was it, uh, we gathered together to ask the Lord's blessing? And then we're going to do that next week. There was some talk at our house whether that was the song or not, and I didn't even remember the conversation at all. Next week, all right? Okay. Oh, you won't be here. Mom, will you play that? Nelly will play that and we will sing. That's a good. So there are songs that we like to sing at Thanksgiving. They're good all the time, but uh, they're especially good right now. So stand with me and we're going to sing Give Thanks. Two more songs before we're through. Let's give thanks.
God good? Amen. And shouldn't we give thanks? Amen. Amen. And so we do. All right, so one uh, children's church, Sister Alex. I felt you staring at me again. I got it all mixed up. So uh, as she leaves uh, with the kids that are going to children's church, I want you to know, and I talked to Randon Preston uh, this morning, and we want to do I Saw the Light. It just I thought about this when I was reading Brother Mike's verse for the scripture, but I told Randon Preston that I didn't want to sing it quite the tempo that we normally do. I want to sing it just a little bit slower, and so, but it's a song that you sing so well, and I want to sing it together. I saw the light. You've got to have some vision to sing this. You've got to have the ability to see. Pronounce those words. Here we go. Father, we know as we look around, there are many that are not here. And Father, I, I, I pray for those that are not here and they just long to be. And Father, I pray for those that should be here and just don't want to be. Father, I just pray that your Holy Spirit would begin to work, especially during Mike's message, uh, to us, Father, those that are here. And Father, those that have been watching online, Father, we just thank you so much for your faithfulness to us. And Father, we just want to return what you have given us so bountifully. And that is your goodness. And Father, we just thank you. We praise you. We lift Brother Mike as he stands before us. Uh, in your son's precious name, we pray. Amen. You, you are seated. Raymond's going to play something. Uh, you know, she's having a baby on Wednesday. And so, uh, Mom said, before you go, I, would you please play? And it's a great Thanksgiving song, my tribute. So y'all listen and worship as Raymond plays.
Thank you, Randa. As much as we rejoice in this new birth, we're going to miss you. You take that week off and have a good time. <laughs> if you have your Bibles with you, we want to invite you to turn with me to the New Testament, once again to the Gospel according to Luke. Luke chapter 18. And we're going to begin reading with verse 35. Luke chapter 18, beginning with verse 35. And I want to share a message with you entitled, A Certain Blind Man Who Seized His Moment. Luke 18, 35. You stand with me in reverence to the Word of God. Came to pass that as Jesus was come near unto Jericho, a certain blind man sat by the wayside begging, and hearing the multitude pass by, he asked what it meant. And they told him that Jesus of Nazareth passes by, and he cried, saying, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And they which went before rebuked him, that he should hold his peace. But he cried so much the more, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood and commanded him to be brought unto him, and when he was come near, he asked him, saying, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? And he said, Lord, that I may receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Receive thy sight, thy faith hath saved thee. And immediately he received his sight and followed him, glorifying God and all the people, when they saw it, gave praise unto God. You may be seated. <clears throat> Father, we thank you for this day that you've given us. We thank you, Father, for these who are here, for those who could not be with us. And Father, we just pray that as we come to this portion of this service that we open your word, that, Lord, you would indeed speak to our hearts. Lord, just anoint me with power. Give me the words to say. We'll, we'll praise you in Jesus' name, for which you and you alone can do. Amen. Again, I want, to, I want to share a message with you entitled, A Certain Blind Man Who Seized His Moment. There's a legend that says that every man during his earthly span of years receives a moment of destiny, a very special opportunity, and it's at this moment that the tide rises. And if a man will take that tide at its crest, then he will be borne along to safety. But if he hesitates, he loses the only current that can carry him to his proper destination. Now again, that, that's only legend. But I, I want to say to you this morning that there is a great deal of truth to it because the destiny of most people in history shows the destiny of most nations has generally been determined in a moment's time. For instance, the thief on the cross had his moment of destiny when he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus looked at him and said, This day thou shalt be with me in paradise. Pontius Pilate had his special moment as he had the opportunity to go one of two ways with Jesus but that choice never came to him again you go to the Old Testament to the book of Genesis and we're told that Esau sold his birthright in a moment of hunger and yet the writer of the Hebrews said that afterwards though he saw it with many tears there was no place of repentance to be found he made his choice and that choice could not be reversed. His moment of destiny came and he missed it. And in our scripture before us this morning, we're told of just such a man who had his moment of destiny. A certain blind man. The gospel writer Mark, giving uh, a parallel account of the same incident, tells us that his name was Bartimaeus. Blind Bartimaeus. And yet the truth of the matter is... He wasn't as blind as some of the other people who were there that day because, you see, he saw something no one else in that crowd saw. And that is, he saw that this was his 
moment of destiny. And as Jesus passed by, he made the most of the moment that was his. In Proverbs chapter 27 and verse 1, the writer says, Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day bringeth forth. The apostle James in his epistle says exactly the same thing. He says, Don't say tomorrow, we'll go into a certain city and we'll buy and sell, but rather say, if the Lord wills, we'll do thus and so. See, the greatest mistake a person can ever make is to say that this opportunity will come again because we don't know that. We don't have that assurance. And so therefore we need to make the most of the moment when it's ours. And this is what I want us to look at in our time remaining. And as we look together at these verses of Scripture, there are three things that I want to call your attention to. Literally three things we discover about this blind man by the name of Bartimaeus and the seizing of his moment. And the first thing that we're told about is his hearing of Jesus. His hearing of Jesus. Look at verse 35. It came to pass that it is, he was come near unto Jericho. A certain blind man sat by the wayside begging, and hearing the multitude pass by, he asked what it meant. And they told him that Jesus of Nazareth passes by. Now here's Here's the scene. Bartimaeus was sitting alongside of the road begging for alms. Now Mark, in his parallel account, puts it this way. Blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. Now the name Timaeus is of Aramaic origin, and guess what it means? It means blind man. So apparently Bartimaeus was a blind son of a blind man. Perhaps we don't know. It was genetic. But at any rate, because he was blind and couldn't work, he was sitting there begging for alms, hoping that someone would drop a few coins into his cup. And so there he was sitting there when suddenly he hears a commotion. And he hears a great multitude of people walking by. And he turns and asks, those around him, what's going on, and they tell him that Jesus is passing by. And there, sitting by the side of the road, he thinks to himself, this is it. This is my one chance in life. And you know what? He was right. He was right. The greatest moment a person ever has in life is that moment when Jesus comes to them. And Although it's been 45 years, I, I, I still can't get over that time in my life. That the person, the one who, the God who created this universe and everything in it would dare to take the time to appear to me and call me unto himself is almost more than I can comprehend. But the beautiful thing about it is that that's the way it is with the Lord. He always makes himself available. He always does. And that's the way it was with Bartimaeus. He had a need and Jesus was there. Now listen, do, do you realize that Jesus is near to each and every one of us in this auditorium this morning? The glorious truth is no matter where we are, He's near to us. You know, the psalmist said, Whether shall I go from thy spirit? Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up to heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. Jesus is near to all of us. I read something interesting, I'll put it that way, this week. Some years back, in Cherokee County, North Carolina, a very well-to-do woman died and left all of her riches, all of her possessions to God. Now, the court sent out a summons, but the sheriff couldn't figure out how, how to serve it, and so he reported back, and he said that after due and diligent search, God can't be found in Cherokee County. <laughs> well, I understand what he was saying, but I beg to differ. God can't be found in Cherokee County. He can be found in any county. He's present. He's near, just like he was in our scripture before us. Bartimaeus had a need, and Jesus was near. Now let me ask you, and, and I, I hope you'll be honest 
with yourself? Do you have a need today? Because it could be anything. It could be financial. It could be physical. It could be marital. It could be spiritual. It could be emotional. Whatever that need might be, Jesus is here. Where two or three are gathered together, He's in our midst. He's here. And this, this is your very special moment. And that's the first thing I wanted you to see about Barmaeus, his hearing of Jesus. The second thing I want to call your attention to is not only his hearing of Jesus, but his hailing of Jesus. After being told Jesus was passing by, verse 38 said, He cried, saying, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy. Again, he had a need, and the one who could meet that need was near. And I read a great story this week, uh, a true story. In 1893, a pastor by the name of Elisha Hoffman visited a church member that seemed to just be constantly having problems in her life. And on this particular day, he discovered that a new calamity had occurred and uh, she was deeply discouraged and as she unburdened her heart to that pastor and told him what had happened she said to him pastor what shall I do and he opened his bible and he shared some scripture with him and then he said sister you need to know that God wants to bear all of your sorrow and the best thing you can possibly do is to take them to Jesus and for a moment she was silent, and then she said, Pastor, you're right. I, I must tell Jesus. And Hoffman said that he made no other calls that day, for in his heart there, there kept burning that phrase, I must tell Jesus. And he went back to his study, and he wrote the words, I must tell Jesus all of my trials. I cannot bear these burdens alone. In my distress, he kindly will help me. He ever loves and cares for his own. I must tell Jesus. I must tell Jesus. I cannot bear these burdens alone. I must tell Jesus. I must tell Jesus. Jesus can help me. Jesus alone. Amen. Twice in our scripture before us, Bartimaeus cried to Jesus. Look again. Verse 38, he cried saying, Jesus, our son of David, have mercy on me. The word cry that's used there describes a great cry of emotion, a, a, an intense cry for help. But notice what verse 39 said. And they which went before rebuked him that he should hold his peace. In other words, they tried to silence him. I'm reminded of the story about the lady who visited this, this high uh, uptown Baptist church and uh, the preacher began to preach his message and as he preached he said something she liked and she shouted amen and suddenly all the people started <laughs> turning around looking at her. A little while went by and he said something else she liked and she said praise the Lord and this time people started squirming in their seats and finally she said uh, glory to God and at that those two ushers came and started to escort her out told her she couldn't behave in a Baptist church that way. She said, I can't help it. I got religion. He said, you sure didn't get it here. <laughs> you know, there are always going to be people who tell you to be quiet, to take the problems and take care of them on your own. Just toughen up and bear up under them. You don't need to try to, re to use religion as a crutch. Well, I'm telling you, you know, you need to take it to the Lord. You need to cry out to the Lord. He's able and He will meet you where you are and He will answer your prayer. That's, that's what Bartimaeus did. And that, that's the second thing that I wanted you to see. And then the third and final thing I want to call your attention to is not only His hearing of Jesus and His hailing of Jesus, but His healing by Jesus. His healing by Him. Look at verse 40. The word says Jesus stood and commanded him to be brought unto it. And in the Greek, what it literally says is he stopped and commanded him to be brought. That's an amazing statement because, listen, Jesus was on his way 
to Jerusalem. He was on his way to the cross. So time was short for him. And yet still he stopped and made himself available to this beggar. Amen. See what that tells us is that Jesus is never too busy to meet our needs whatever they may be. Like Nicodemus, we may come at midnight. But the Lord's never too busy to receive us. And, and that's the way it was with Bartimaeus. The word said Jesus stopped and commanded him to be brought. And when he's come, he asked him, saying, What wilt thou that I shall do unto thee? Now, did Jesus not know what Bartimaeus wanted? Of course he did. He's God. So then why did he ask Bartimaeus what he wanted him to do? Because he was forcing Bartimaeus to examine himself and come to terms with, with what his greatest need was. Because Jesus knew his... Bartimaeus could have said, Lord, what I really need is a new coat. Or what I really need is a, is a better place to sit and, and, and beg. But he didn't say that. In the middle of verse 41, he said, Lord, that I may receive my sight. I want you to think about something. If Jesus were to stop where you're sitting this morning and say the same thing to you, that he did to Bartimaeus, what would you have me to do for you? What would you say? How would you answer that? Listen, it's important. It really is because life's greatest moment may be today, right where you are in that seat. This may be your greatest moment. Understand something. Our cries don't annoy God. Our, our requests, our needs, they don't alarm God. He's able to do anything we need him to to do. Well, what happened with Bartimaeus? After saying, Lord, that I may receive my sight, verse 42 says, Jesus said unto him, Receive thy sight, thy faith hath saved thee, and immediately he received his sight. Just like that. This man who had never seen a thing in his life could now see perfect. And the word said he followed him, glorifying God, literally praising God for what he had done for him. His moment of opportunity came and he seized it. And because he did, he received the miracle that he needed in his life. But had he not seized that moment, he'd have never had another opportunity because the Lord... The Lord Never passed that way again. He went on to Jerusalem, and there he died on the cross. Do you remember in the Old Testament, Moses came up to Pharaoh and said, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Let my people go that they may worship me in the wilderness. And Pharaoh refused. And yet, after God demonstrated his power in a number of plagues, Pharaoh finally said, All right, all right, I'll, I'll let them go. And Moses said, when, Pharaoh? And he said, tomorrow. See, that was always his answer. I'll do it tomorrow. And you know, you may be here this morning, and you've been saying that same thing. You know, some people say, I know I need to be saved, and I'll do it tomorrow. I, I know that things aren't all they ought to be in my life, but I'll get it straightened out. Tomorrow, I know that God's calling me to do this. He's calling me to do that. I'll do it tomorrow. But what if, as Elvis Presley saying, tomorrow never comes? You see, whatever it is that you need, whatever it is that God is telling you to do, you need to seize the moment before the moment passes away. You know, one of my all-time favorite pastors. He's long since been gone to the Lord, but Ron Dunn used to say, there's not anything wrong with any of us that a miracle won't cure. Amen. That's true. But the problem with so many, and let me just go ahead and say, Baptist today is we don't want people around us to know we need anything. So true. We don't want to admit that we have a need. We would rather go without than to step forward. 
But what you need to understand is that the Lord is here. He's right where you are. And He's asking what need do you have in your life. And, and what my prayer is that this would not just be another Sunday when we offer the invitation that people sit and or stand and sing but never make a move. You can't tell me this morning that somebody in this auditorium doesn't have a need. I don't believe that. We all do. He's here. All you have to do is cry out to Him. You bow with me. Our Father, we thank You and we praise You for this day. Lord, we thank You for this Word that, Lord, You love us. You make Yourself available to us. And, Lord, whatever need we have, You're able and willing to meet. So, Father, my prayer is that today we would avail ourselves of You. Father, this is Your time and we're not going to do anything whatsoever to trick people to come. Lord, we just pray that your will be done. And we'll pray for it in Jesus' name. Amen. He wants you to stand with me as, as we sing our hymn of invitation just as I...